what would be the point of ranking Elliott Smith's albums? For a diehard fan, at least, it's very difficult to do in any meaningful sort of way. It's not so much picking my favorite album that's difficult, it's more so picking my least favorite. It just doesn't feel right. I don't have a least favorite album, but if I were forced to pick, I guess I could come up with one. I know this is super cliche, but it honestly does feel like choosing between family members. It's so close for me that if I look at my rankings 1 through 6 and I reverse them, that would still, to me, be a very reasonable way to rank his albums. And when I look at my quote-unquote least favorite album, there's still songs on that album that I consider some of my favorite songs of all time. So it might seem pointless to rank his albums, especially considering that I go through phases where my preferences for his albums change, but over time I definitely have started to see patterns emerge. I'm at the point now where I think I could safely choose my top two, maybe three albums, but choosing my bottom three favorite albums is very difficult. But we're going to start at the bottom anyways because I figure it's better to reveal my favorite albums at the end. Okay, so choosing my least favorite album was very difficult and it came down to Roman Candle and XO. I went back and forth on it for a long time and this was the longest decision for me to make was between these two albums. In the end, I went with XO as my least favorite Elliott Smith album. And I know, that might be a very shocking choice for some. Some people think that's his best album and you know what? I can't argue with that. It's a great album. I love all his albums so much, and EXO has songs on it that I would consider some of my favorite songs of all time. So it just goes to show how close it is for me. I do love EXO, but in the end, I think it does come last for me. EXO is Elliot Smith's least accessible album to me, which might sound sort of backwards because it probably is one of his most accessible albums to the average person. Uh, it's the most mainstream, maybe except for uh, Figure Eight. And there's a handful of songs on EXO so that I felt were least true to Elliot's style than any other song on his studio catalog. Bled White, Baby Britain, and A Question Mark. Although in time I have come to love all three of those songs. I think they're great. I just don't think they're quite as true to Elliot's style as the rest of the songs in his discography. I think he was going for a sort of upbeat, poppy sort of sound in those songs. And to me, it was just like he wasn't quite ready to achieve that sound. It was just a bit too much of a departure from his initial sound. And I feel like in figure eight is where Elliot Smith really mastered that sound that he was going for. That really poppy, sort of ultra-rich, upbeat, lush sound. So to me, the songs Baby Britain, Bled White, and A Question Mark were songs that, if they were developed a bit more, would have been a good fit on figure eight or sort of maybe what he was going for on figure eight, but didn't quite nail. But in the end, I love all three of those songs, don't get me wrong. Bottle Up and Explode, I feel like was a song that was sort of in the same vein as those songs, but I feel like he just absolutely nailed it with that one. I think it's a brilliant song. It's one of my favorite songs of all time, I think. It's just sort of very bright and fast paced and just like very, I don't know, intense. And the lyrics are very emotional and raw and just, I don't know, it's a great song altogether. Also, I think EXO is a better one-two opening punch than any other studio album, starting with uh, Sweet Adeline to Tomorrow Tomorrow. I just think it's a great one-two combo to open the album. And the other songs on EXO are all just great. It's all good, it's all fantastic, by the way. <laughs> so moving on to my fifth favorite Elliott Smith album, as I mentioned already, it's Roman Candle. And I just couldn't put Roman Candle last uh, when I first got into Elliot Smith, this album really appealed to me. I got into it right away, and I just loved that like lo-fi, sort of dark, eerie, folky sound it had. The songs Last Call, No Names 1 and 2, Condor Avenue, and Roman Candle all just really appealed to me right away. Uh, it was a really great showcase of like his whispery, soft vocals. It was just an entertaining album to listen to start to finish, where EXO wasn't like that for me for a long time. And I'm not trying to be objective about my list, it's, you know, my personal rankings. Otherwise, I might put EXO above Roman Candle, but for me, I think Roman Candle is the better album. And I know that's crazy to say, considering some of the gems that are on EXO. But hey, it is what it is. It's my list, right? So anyways, moving on to my fourth favorite Elliot Smith album. So this album just sort of ended up in fourth place because all the other rankings were set 
you know, this was the last album that I ranked for some reason and just fell to fourth place, but it's figure eight. And I think this is the most polarizing Elliott Smith album. I've seen some people praise it as by far his greatest album. And then a lot of people say it's by far his worst album. So I think Elliott wanted something specific with figure eight. I think he was going for a specific sound. Like he seemed to have more of a vision for that album just in the way it turned out and also if you just hear him talking about that album in interviews and stuff he just seems like uh you know he really planned it out and it shows it's a very very cohesive album and it's sound uh it's very poppy very polished all the instrumentation in it is just like done wonderfully like the arrangements are lush and intricate and it all just comes together so beautifully and it's probably elliot's most mainstream album and it's probably the least like experimental like i don't know with his first three albums i feel like he was developing his sound and sort of like discovering himself but when figure eight came out i feel like he sort of was in charge of his sound it sounded more like masterful and less like naive if that makes sense like it just sounded like he knew exactly what he was doing with every song and the album was mixed and mastered wonderfully it's just a really beautiful album start to finish overall it's probably his most upbeat brightest most accessible album one thing about figure eight that i love is the instrumentation in this album is so on point it's really layered and just intricate and just his guitar is sounding so good like in stupidity tries for example i just love that like low end crunch on his guitar and same with la and then also i think it really displayed elliot's range a lot better than any of his previous albums like it really showcases more moody melodramatic sound like in everything means nothing to me and everything reminds me of her and then it showcases more sort of heavier rock sort of sound that he was going for uh in like son of sam and la can't make a sound of sort of like that too i really love that song it's maybe my favorite song on the album uh, i just love the drumming in it it's very effective uh, even though it's pretty simple and then also the guitar like the lead clean sort of guitar sound is really cool in that and then easy way out and i better be quiet now are two really sort of soft sweeter acoustic songs that i just i think they're just beautiful songs they're very pretty and they all sort of showcase a different side of his music you know his soft acoustic his heavy rock his more avant-garde style and figure eight maybe showcased his skill as an instrumentalist better than any other album Anyways, I think it's a great, great album. I could see why it's polarizing. I could see why some people don't like it. Um, but, you know, I, I just love the album. And this album is just absolutely legendary. Uh, I mean, I got nothing bad to say about it, honestly. Uh, my top three favorite Elliott Smith albums, it's not just like... I don't know. I can't, I can't find flaws in any of them. So it's just really coming down to what my gut says I like better. Anyways, my third favorite album is Self Titled and it's just such a cool album maybe it's coolest album and it's always the album i recommend to people uh who are just getting into them because there are songs on there that i think you listen to and it's just like instantly you you can't not love them they're just too freaking cool uh songs like christian brothers alphabet town and saint ides heaven and okay maybe it might not be a super accessible album to some it's uh got a very dark sound to it but then also it has very very sweet uh you know heart-wrenching songs like the white lady loves you more and then the biggest lie clementine is my favorite lyric of any elliot smith lyric and that's just a very simple one near the beginning the streets wet you can tell by the sound of the cars to me that's just a brilliant lyric uh this song really showcases his ability uh as a lyricist in terms of imagery like for me i just got such a good image in my head from that song just the guy at the bar and then i don't know the rest of it the song sort of just sounds like drunk to me you know what i mean i don't know it's a beautiful song and then uh the darkness of other songs like uh christian brothers and alphabet town and then southern bell is really great too it just really shows what an amazing acoustic guitarist he is and then the one lyric in there that i really like is uh teeth. i live in a southern town where all you can do is grit your teeth just i don't know more good imagery in that song and um maybe his most iconic distinct album you know it's just like it's just cool just his coolest album and uh i feel like it sounds like someone who hasn't fully discovered his sound yet or who he is but he's just like 
in the midst of that like creative surge that everyone goes through in their early 20s you know it's just like uh yeah he was so creative at the time and like this is perfect music so my favorite album came down to either either or or from a basement on a hill <laughs> See what I did there? A stupid joke. So, uh, yeah, this was so tough for me. But uh, over the years, I just, I finally think I've settled on a favorite album. These two is always up in the air between these two. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just, I love From a Basement on a Hill. And From a Basement on a Hill is my favorite Elliott Smith album. And I will discuss why, but first I will discuss either or and why that's my second favorite album, almost my favorite Elliot Smith album. You know, you can tell Elliot Smith is just like in the zone when he's writing these songs on this album. Same with EXO. Like he was just in the zone during that phase. I felt like it sounded like self-titled, but with a lot more confidence. And, you know, he experimented with a lot more different sounds he brought in more instruments and either or is just like such a cool like one of the best albums of all time in my opinion the best album of all time like trying to be objective about it i just i, I wish it was is more popular you know i feel like it's a shame that it's uh not considered like one of the top 10 albums of all time i feel like it just showcases the dynamic range the ability the just how well-rounded of a songwriter Elliot Smith was. I think more than any other album, either or showcased the best of what Elliot had to offer. It really showed why he was such a great, prolific, well-rounded songwriter. It highlighted his emotional expression in songs like Alameda, Between the Bars, 2.45 AM, No Name Number 5. It also put on display this ability that Elliot had where he could express the meaning of a song through its feeling and atmosphere and mood, not necessarily just through the lyrics and their literal meaning. Like a lot of the songs would have cryptic meaning, but you still sort of got a sense of what the song was about. And uh, Speed Trials is a very good example of that. And I think Punch and Judy is probably another example of that. Also, I think Either Or is the best album cover of his six studio albums. I don't know, it's just a classic shot. Elliot's looking cool and they're in that like, uh, I think it's like a dressing room or like a rehearsal room or something like that. Uh, there's a story about that album cover somewhere on the internet and there's a bigger picture of it too, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, I thought it was a cool album cover. I always wanted that album cover as a poster, but like, I don't know, I think it's a pretty low resolution shot, so it's hard to get it big, but I don't know if any of you know where I can get like a high resolution poster of that album cover, at least like, I don't know, this biggish. let me know because I would pay like a little more than you would expect for that. Also the drumming in this album is really cool. Speed Trials is really cool drumming. And then Alameda with that, that snare. And then also Cupid's Trick. I love the guitar in that. It's a really good display of Elliot's crunchy ES330 sound that I love. I love that song for the guitar. I love hearing him play that song live. Now onto my favorite album from A Basement on the Hill. I just think it's a perfect album. Uh, even relating it to his story in real life. Like I think his, his album sort of followed an arc uh, of their own. Like if you think of his catalog of albums as an album itself and each album as a song, it sort of followed an, uh, like a rise and fall classic sort of arc. And then also Elliot's life and career sort of followed the same thing. And I feel like From a Basement on the Hill just sort of tied it all in together and I know that he died during production and the end result had a lot to do with the sound engineers having to complete it. And I was even in contact with one of the engineers on that album through email many years ago. And I just asked him a couple basic questions. And one thing that I remember that he said to me that stood out is that the final, the final result of that album would have been a lot different if Elliot were around to finish it. And that always sort of stuck with me. 
because I'm wondering, like, how did he mean that? Because I'm pretty sure the track listing would have been more or less the same, but maybe the songs would have been mixed differently. Maybe he's just talking in terms of mixing, but I don't know. Maybe it could have been a totally different album altogether. Yeah, so I, I guess some people think it might be sort of uh, a weird choice to be his number one because maybe he didn't have uh, a hand in the mixing process and a lot of that but uh what can i say i just like it for what it is i think it's a very chaotic album it's the songs on it are very very intense or very soft and sweet they're very heart-wrenching they're a lot more blunt and in your face and literal in terms of their lyrics and meaning the sound like it's a lot louder than any of elliot's albums although there are very soft songs uh, there are some songs that are just very loud and chaotic, like Don't Go Down, or um, Shooting Star, or King's Crossing. It's just very intense, you know, like comparing to Figure 8 before, which had very uh, cohesive, lush, um, very harmonic uh, instrumentation. Um, from A Basement on a Hill had much more dissonant, harsher louder noisier instrumentation uh in a really cool way though and i just like the contrast of styles in the album like it's not a cohesive album like it's all over the place uh and you can get that sense just from the opening two songs like coast to coast one of my favorite elliot songs of all time i think it's really underrated and then to let's get lost which is a really soft simple sort of uh sad acoustic song those two songs to set the album off just sort of you know lets you know what you're in for uh, most underrated song of the album i think is little one that song took a while for me to really appreciate but it's a really cool song if you listen to the lyrics and just like the bass notes and just how like even the melancholy he can squeeze out of simple bass notes is amazing especially towards the end there's some really cool uh fills he does with the bass and then maybe my favorite elliot smith song of all time king's crossing is on there uh also i love shooting star just like the chaotic guitar riff at the beginning and also just the loudness of the song uh is really cool um a distorted reality is now a necessity to be free i think it's just like an amazing song in terms of like uh lyrics and meaning and just like the structure of it is really cool it's a really complex song in that regard and the sense i got from that album like the sound it sounded like someone coming off the rails compared to figure eight where it was much more cohesive and much tighter and much brighter sort of highlighted elliot smith at his peak and then from a basement on the hill sort of highlighted just how everything went wrong and it's just like i don't know everything everything together just this whole story and just like where his life was leading and just how his sound progressed it all led up to that album and just the lyrics and the emotional intensity of it all and just how much i love him and just what happened to him and the tragedy of that and how it all just sort of came together in this album and was captured in that album. And you can hear the chaos of all of that going on in that album. And uh, to me, I think that just added to it, you know, in terms of pure sound, I, I also think it's my favorite album, but just, you know, that added layer on top of it just made it really emotional and poignant for me. And just listening to the album start to finish is just like such a journey. It's up and down. It's a real roller coaster and it's intense and it's super raw and it's loud and it's noisy. And uh, yeah, it's my favorite Elliott Smith album and my favorite album of all time. And I think it's a masterpiece. I think all his albums are masterpieces in their own right. My six favorite albums are those six albums. Then everything else is just like somewhere over there, you know. There's like music and then there's Elliot Smith. It's like its own thing. Anyways, that's it. That's me ranking his albums. Let me know if you agree, disagree. I wanna hear your rankings. Uh, I just wanna hear what your opinions are. Uh, if you think I got anything wrong, if you agree with me on anything, all that, anything you wanna say about it. Anyways, there's the police, oh shit.
apparently they disagreed. So that's it. I hope you guys like this video. I'm going to do more in-depth analysis videos of Elliot's music in the future and sort of frame them around like a simple idea, like ranking his albums as I did here. Anyways, I hope you uh, like my rankings. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great night. Cheers. Peace out.